the power of jazz as was personified in Duke Ellington's output and his, and his handling of his musicians and his um, encouraging of them in, in a personal direction is that they actually allowed him um, to express himself and to express through them their personalities and his music that 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 had such a wide ranging uh, emotional narrative, if you if you mm. want to call it that, that uh, it could speak to everybody. See, because I I saw Ellington once on his last tour of Los Angeles. He was playing at Disneyland, and he was playing out outdoors. This little black kid was because they were on a low, a low on a low band stand, mm -hmm. you know, about two or two or three feet at most. And so, this little this little black kid was walking past the bandstand because he was just at Disneyland. He wasn't any here, Duke Ellington. He was <laughs> going across to some ride and going in front of the bandstand. And so Ellington was at the mic and he he looked down at him. He says, he said, young man. Hold on a moment. The little boy looked up and he said, he said, he, he said, come up here. The boy is looking at him. He said, it's okay. Just do it. You're safe. So the little boy came up, came up there. <laughs> and so Duke walked away from the piano. He says, sit down here, please. And so the little boy sat down. He said, now, play something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the little boy looked around. And he said, he said. No, no, go ahead, play something. It's okay. It's all right. And so the little boy started, you know, moving his hands around on the piano. And then Duke says, C, C, blues and C. And so then, boom, they started, started swinging. And the little boy, he was like, he played kind of like a, a spastic kind of bassy or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, you know, it was just, it was just, truly wild playing, right? <laughs> and so as soon as the audience got hung up in, in, in the beat that was being created by the band, and the fact that they were looking at the little boy, then once they got to that point, the Duke said, he stopped it. And he said, thank you, young man. And then he let him off the band. And he went to the mic and he said, well, things being the way they are today, there are many people who would think he was the real thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so then, then he went, and he, then he went immediately into another pow. <laughs> but it was that's uh, interesting that he knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. That you could have this kid who could not play. Yeah. But if the kid was playing in front of a band that that really this sounded good, great, yeah, it was swing. Then yeah. the kids mm -hmm. thought the people thought the kid is doing that. Yeah. No. He wasn't doing that. Let's talk a little bit about Duke Ellington and the blues. Now, most band directors and students think of the blues as just a 12-bar form. Um, and one of the things that Duke Ellington was quite adept at, probably more so than any composer or band leader in history, is dressing up blues form in uh, Sunday go to meet and close, <laughs> as it were. But you know, Duke Ellington also created a sense of blues harmony, blues melody, blues form, blues expression. Can you talk just a little bit about Duke Ellington and the blues. Duke invented something that had not existed in music before, which is what we call the blue mood. Mm -hmm. That is, it's not a blues, really. The tune may not be a blues. But by using certain kinds of, of harmonies associated with the blues, then you get a blue mood. It's not the blues, mm -hmm. but, but it, it's a blue mood. So he, so he wrote these mood pieces that were were uh, very affected by that. It became another uh, another sort of form, and, and and all through his music, he was constantly trying to figure out how to to get the flavor of the blues in in, in many different situations. 